Brandon here. I'm coming to you this week from Owner's Acres here in Aurora. We're on block five, uh, which is actually, uh, as you drive around the countryside, you'll notice a lot of field signs going up, a lot of test plots uh, getting signs up. And this is where we take uh, 15 hybrids in block uh, five here. Uh, they're newer genetics, sometimes experimental hybrids, and, and we put them through the Owner's Acres treatment out here with uh, the higher management, pushing some populations, pushing fertility a little bit, and just see what they have. But uh, what I really want to talk about this week is just where we're at. Um, you know, we've got a lot of reports of, of some disease showing up, uh, southern rust being reported across uh, multiple counties now in Nebraska. Uh, the planes are still flying, getting some of these brown silk applications of fungicides on. So uh, that's probably been the primary focus, obviously cleaning up some insects as we still have some uh, rootworm beetle around. Uh, still seeing just a couple Japanese beetles, but they seem to have run their course. Uh, now we turn to uh, just kind of evaluating tip feeding with uh, western bean cutworm and earworm. Um, where are we at as far as GDUs? We're entering that 17, 1800. Uh, you can see uh, I have some different uh, maturity hybrids here. Uh, you'll see stuff that we've already been milking to, to stuff that's still in the blister, you know, 116 day uh, versus 106, 107 day versus your 111 day. So as you're looking at your field, you're going to see uh, uh, some of that separation of maturities now as, as far as how fast they start putting milk and starch into the kernels. Uh, again, we talked about this before, but there's three main things we're looking for right now. Uh, first is we need the water. Uh, second is we need the nutrients, but most importantly now we really rely on the sunlight. Uh, some of this uh, uh, smoke we've had coming in, some of this hazy uh, weather is not ideal. Uh, we learned this in the past. Uh, a couple years ago, if you remember, we were pretty excited about the crop we had looking. Everybody asked me about, what do you think, what do you think? And then we went the entire month of August and only had about 11, 10, 11 days of ideal solar radiation. So uh, we really want to see that sun uh, out during the day and not obstructed by clouds or obviously uh, as we're seeing some of this smoke. So uh, not much we can do about that, but that's, that is a concern we have as we uh, watch this crop go forward. Uh, secondly, you know, sometimes it's easy to think we've got it made. Uh, we're far from there. I actually pulled an ear here. Um, we don't have much starch in these kernels. This ear was pulled uh, four days ago, and if you pull an ear and let it sit around, you can see we still have a long ways to go as far as putting that starch in. Um, if this crop were to quit now, uh, we basically wouldn't be harvesting anything. So we still got to finish this out, uh, finish the fourth quarter here. Um, when we're looking at our plants, uh, again, you know, starting down at the bottom, looking for any nutrient deficiencies. Uh, again, I, I like what I'm seeing here because I've got a plant that uh, is not showing any nutrient deficiencies, just a little bit of light scarring from some leaf miner uh, all the way up the plant. Uh, no signs of disease and uh, working my way all, I already pulled the ear off, but working all the way to the top, uh, seeing a nice clean plant. So as you're walking your fields, uh, if you're running into some potassium, nitrogen, uh, different nutrient deficiencies, you'll start seeing a lot of that show up on the bottom. Um, you know, depending on the disease you're looking for, you're looking at the bottom, or, you know, if you're looking at southern rust, we start looking a little bit higher up in the plant uh, as those spores come in and, and deposit on the plant. Uh, Soybean-wise, uh, real quick here, uh, we're seeing soybeans move along, uh, definitely filling a lot of these bottom pods now. Uh, looking to keep the water to soybeans like we've talked about the last week or two. Um, and then pushing uh, up in this upper canopy, we still have a few flowers going on here. And then we're actually forming some, some beans and some pods at the top. So we're into that R4 stage on soybeans uh, in a lot of areas. Uh, you'll start seeing some of the maturity of beans push as we get into this as a group 2.3 uh, versus your 3.0s. So, uh, one of the things I always have fun looking at this time of the year is just how some of the maturities separate out, uh, whether it's your variety of soybeans or your hybrid corn, and, and where we're at. But uh, insect-wise on the soybeans, again, we're watching for a lot of bean leaf beetles. Uh, we haven't seen a thistle caterpillar outbreak. Uh, uh, picked up a few aphids here uh, in the last couple weeks. Uh, just some things we're going to be monitoring as we move forward. Uh, again, we just encourage everybody to try to keep your beans clean. Uh, of insects. Uh, this is the ideal time, uh, getting to the back end of that time frame where you can put a fungicide on soybeans. Hearing a few reports of white mold, uh, been in a couple fields uh, with frog eye. Um, obviously frog eye can be pretty devastating, so we're kind of monitoring where that's at. 
Uh, make sure if you're controlling fog eye, there is, frog eye, there is a resistance to some of the strobilarins, so uh, we need to make sure we're using the right chemistry uh, if you are running into some frog eye in your soybean fields. Uh, other than that, keep the water going. Uh, if you're in dry land, we'll pray for some rain and keep the sun shining. We'll see you next week.